Hi, my name is Rayanne Porte and I'm glad you're here. In this video, we're gonna be talking all about achievement and why this notion of achievement might be blocking you from overcoming your food and fitness struggles. So let's dive in. Let's talk first about one description or one way that we might describe our food and fitness struggles. For me, what that was was, gosh, I just can't stick to a certain way of eating and a certain way of working out. Well, what was behind this? Behind this was this notion that if I can stick to this certain way of eating and working out, I win. And if I can't, well, gosh, I lose. And really, when rubber meets the road, what was behind all of that? Behind all of it was this notion that I could use food, fitness, and my body to achieve something. And if I mess up, I wouldn't achieve it. Well, what are we trying to achieve? Let's just ask ourselves that. What is the motivation behind why and what we eat and why and what we do for working out? Well, let's just list a couple. Hmm, happiness. If I can control how I eat, maybe that'll lead to me looking a certain way, that'll lead to forever a life of happiness. For some others, it's health, that's a big one. And for other people, it might be ease, control, stability, security, longevity. I think in other areas of life where we strive to achieve things, we're, we're striving to achieve wealth, status. And for me personally, it was health. In my food and fitness struggles, I, at the end of the day, was trying to achieve health. So I was trying to achieve this life where I had food and fitness figured out and I had a good relationship with my body. Well, I thought the way to achieve that was, gosh, I just need to control what I'm eating and then I won't eat the treats. So if I plan the salad for lunch and if I plan the chicken and veggies for dinner, I just need to stick to it and then I won't be drawn to all of those treats that are just gonna lead me to keep eating and eating and eating and all the things. Well, what I discovered was that when I hyper-controlled my food, that was actually drawing me to eat more and more and more. That was the thing that was leading me to be drawn to the treats. And why is that? Well, it's because at any time our brain picks up on us depriving it, it wants to feel safe, secure, and satisfied. And so it's going to do whatever it takes to get what it thinks it needs. And so that's why it kept on sending me messages, eat the food, eat the food, eat the food. Well, when I discovered that this hyper-controlling and restricting my food was leading to me to actually eat more food, I thought, well, should I just do the opposite? Should I just like go on a food free for all and keep eating and eating and eating? And at some point I just won't have cravings for all the things. I was basically a mess. And at the end of the day, my quest for health and my quest to figure out food ran dry. So what did God reveal to me? He revealed to me that Rayanne, Food, fitness, and your body aren't things that you can achieve in or fail in. They're not things that you can experience success in or failure. And why is that? Well, we for sure don't need to achieve things with food, fitness, and our body for salvation. That definitely changed when Jesus came. Pre-Jesus in the Torah, there were definitely rules about food. And if you didn't eat a certain way, that was sin. But when Jesus came, all of those rules went away. So now we don't have food rules any longer. And secondly, you don't need to eat a certain way in order to bring fulfillment. That's never going to, you're never going to be able to achieve certain things with food, fitness, and your body that are going to bring fulfillment. And I think a lot of times we use other things in our life to try to bring us fulfillment too, if we can achieve it. And that meaning in our jobs, if we can achieve a certain status or promotion, we think that's going to fulfill us. Or if I could just be the perfect mom, that's what's going to bring me fulfillment. When really at the end of the day, God is saying, I have a totally different way of looking at all of these things than things that you can achieve in. What does God say? God says, seek me first and all will be given to you. So that means you don't need to seek after those things. You get to seek after God and God's going to give them all to you. God's going to provide 
for you. He's going to take care of all of those things. You, we get to seek him. So when it comes to food, fitness, and our body, what does that mean specifically? Well, it means that we get to trust God with those things. And God says, I've given you a body ran that can figure out these things on their own. You don't have to get in the way of it. I've given your body a hunger cue. I've given your body a fullness cue, and I've given you all foods for your enjoyment. So that means that we can trust our bodies to tell us when we're hungry, we can trust them to tell us when they're full, and we can eat a mix of all foods. And what did I discover when I shifted my perspective to this new way of thinking that didn't include achievement? I discovered that when I did eat a mix of all foods, my body did crave a mix of all foods. My body lost all of those crazy cravings towards food that I thought it was forever going to have. So what good news is this that we can pull out, we can stop striving and trying to achieve certain things through the way that we eat, the way that we work out, and the way that we view our bodies. And to further push on this notion of achievement, I think some people who are a bit apathetic in life are still buying into this notion of achievement. Well, I'm supposed to want to achieve this and this. I'm, I'm supposed to want to achieve that and that. Well, I'm not going to really buy into that. I'm just going to do my own thing and do whatever I want. And God doesn't intend for that either. That's basically apathy. God has a whole new perspective for us to take on that is so exciting. And what is that? Well, let's take a look in his word. So when we accept Jesus and when we become a Christian, we get to realize that it's not about us. The very first sentence of the Bible is, in the beginning, God created. The subject of the sentence is God. And what does the very end of the Bible say? It says, Jesus is saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus is the subject of the sentence. And he, the Trinity is the very the beginning and the end. They are the subject of the sentence. That is what this life is all about. So how does that relate to us in our day to day? Well, God is saying, I haven't given you these things here on earth to achieve in. I've actually given you a calling. And what is that calling? Well, in Matthew 28, he says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So he has given each of us a calling. All of our callings is to make, a, make disciples, but he's given us that calling in different jobs, in different places, and surrounded by different people that we get to share our testimony with. And that is the most beautiful thing in the world. And so where does food come into play? Well, food is a vehicle that helps us live out our calling. I think a lot of times we think that food is the end. We make a goal out of food when really food is a means to the end. The end is the call, our calling, however, God, however that looks like for us in our individual life. So food is a vehicle to help us in our calling, in our day-to-day -day life. And it's a gift that God's given us that we get to enjoy and that helps fuel us to, to live out our calling. We don't, he's not calling us to think about food as the end, as food is the goal. Like food isn't our calling. He has a unique calling for each one of us, which is such a beautiful thing. Um, a note on that is, Yes, of course, different foods make us feel different. And so that's where we get to just experiment with what are our likes? What are our dislikes when it comes to foods? How does this food make me feel in my everyday? And we can kind of go about food from that approach instead of this rigid, forced approach that we typically have um, before we come into contact with the gospel that helps us um, figure out what God really intends for food to be in our life. So that's all I have for you today in this video. I hope that you have enjoyed it. And if you want to talk to me about your specific situation, I am always here. Have a great day and I'll see you back here next week.